What do Green Bay Packers players have to say about the Denver Broncos' newest head coach, Nathaniel Hackett? Plus, what have the Denver Broncos learned about General Manager George Payton since his time of taking over? We can take a look back at his moves and the hiring process and come to a firm conclusion about the outlook of George Payton. Plus, we get a little bit of a preview from the AFC-NFC Championship Weekend from our local experts here on the Lockdown Broncos Podcast. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode of the show. You are Locked On Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Locked On NFL Network. Green Bay Packers players, Sarah, they are looking at the situation of Nathaniel Hackett leaving as bittersweet. They loved him as a coach. They're going to miss him, but they're also happy for him as well. We're going to get into a conversation today about the Green Bay Packers and what current players have to say about the newest Denver Broncos head coach. From the South Stands to the end zone, I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. You can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format. You can watch us here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. And once again, Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Sarah, my friend, hey, let's waste no time. There's excitement right now in Broncos country. The fan base is jazzed, and rightfully so. There's some optimism for the future here for the organization. A lot of unknowns, right? Now the head coach is addressed. Quarterback's going to be next. The owner of the team's going to be next. It's going to be a wild offseason, but we got Broncos country covered, my friend. But one thing that we're going to talk about today, Green Bay Packers players, they're going to miss Nathaniel Hackett. I know. I love it. And you love seeing that. Obviously, you don't love it that they're going to be missing a coach that they've grown to kind of know <laughs> and love and stuff like that. But it is cool. Like, one of the things that I like to do, Cody, and I've told you about this before, like if the Broncos make a free agent signing or something like that of a player that we don't necessarily know a ton about, what's the best way to find out what they're all about? It's to go and look at what the fan base, what the other players, their teammates are saying about them, how devastated they are to lose them. And I love it. Marquez Valdez Scantling, a wide receiver for the Packers, he kicked it off with a really nice one. I thought this was cool. He says that of Nathaniel Hackett, he says one of the absolute best human beings and smartest coaches around. Man, this makes my heart happy seeing great people get rewarded. I wish my guy nothing but the absolute best. I think that's I think that's awesome to hear, man. You love to and, and Hackett spoke specifically on this. He's like, I treat every player like a starter. Valdez Scantling is a great example of that, you know. And he got opportunities to prove uh, to prove you know why Nathaniel Hackett is right in doing that. And there's former players that have played under Hackett. There's been media members that know of Hackett, and they say, hey, he's one of the best coaches out there in terms of building relationships with players. Like, he absolutely cares for his players, which, look, we talked about, right? The Broncos, they need a player's coach. Nathaniel Hackett right now has the vibes of being a player's coach. Let's go to practice squad quarterback for the Green Bay uh, Packers, Kurt Benkert. He said, this is a W for the Denver Broncos. Good luck, coach. And I'm going to throw another one out there, too. Alan Lazard, wide receiver. He didn't post a lot of words, but just one emoji, right? It was the emoji, sad face, with the one tear coming down, uh, obviously on one of the cheeks there. I think that speaks regards into how they feel about him. But he's not the only Green Bay Packers player that had a lot of things to say and good things as well. I'm sure there's going to be more that comes out, but we're highlighting on the ones that we've seen so far. That's right. That's right. And running back AJ Dillon, obviously, you know, he's he's truly connected to this whole thing, because as we're going to learn about, you know, the Broncos might be bringing the run game coordinator and offensive line coach. So AJ Dillon, very connected uh, to these two guys. But he says, congratulations to Coach Hackett and his family. Truly an amazing coach. You love to hear that from, especially from a young player, right? I mean, A.J. Dillon, kind of an unpopular draft pick when it was made by the Packers, but he turned out to be a big piece of their offense under uh, uh, Nathaniel Hackett, obviously. So great to see uh, the positive vibes coming from Packers. What do they call themselves? Packers I, Kingdom, Packers Country, I Packers have Nation. I no idea. I mean, I don't even <laughs> know if it's something cheesehead related. It could be. I have no clue at this point. I, I think the love there, Quadzilla speaking a lot of love there for Nathaniel Hackett. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers had a lot of great things over the course of his career to say about Hackett. And ladies and gentlemen, we actually had some really good insight from Locked On Packers host Peter Bukowski when he gave us some intel on Nathaniel Hackett and what the Broncos might be getting out of him as well and a little bit of history. Everyone's talking about the revolutionary offenses of the Sean McVay's, the Kyle Shanahan's. We'll talk about what Nathaniel Hackett has learned and who he's learned it from. So let's take it right now to Locked On Packers host Peter Bukowski, the audio bit that he had sent over to us once the hire became official. The Packers absolutely loved 
offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett, who wasn't calling plays in Green Bay. That responsibility was left for Matt LaFleur, but he was tasked with certain situational aspects. He was the red zone specialist in 2020 when Aaron Rodgers was also the MVP. This was one of the best, most efficient red zone offenses we have ever seen. They dubbed it the gold zone because Nathaniel Hackett loves Austin Powers gold member. No, seriously, that's the reason. And his players loved it. They would score and scream to the heavens, I love gold. He was a galvanizing, energetic coach that the players absolutely loved. He is also beloved by the media, not just in Green Bay, but going back to his time in Jacksonville. The other thing that was so essential about bringing in Nathaniel Hackett for coach Matt LaFleur when he arrived in Green Bay, Hackett helped bridge the gap between the old offense under Mike McCarthy, who learned the West Coast offense from Nathaniel Hackett's dad, and Matt LaFleur, who is running a different version of that West Coast offense, the Mike Shanahan version, now known as the Kyle Shanahan version. And he helped get Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers on the same page. That was vital in the evolution of this offense. He's a terrific communicator, a smart coach. The question is going to be play calling. Yeah, he called plays in Jacksonville, but didn't in Green Bay. And so How is he going to look in that role? That is a big question. He is expected, as of this recording, to take offensive line coach Adam Stenovich with him. That is also a big blow for the Packers. Stenovich was seen as vital to this staff and their ability to constantly shuffle guys in and out of the lineup to produce these late-round picks, guys like Royce Newman, John Runyon Jr., and turn them into reasonable starters in the NFL for a Packers offensive line that was consistently over the last three years in the top 10 and things like pass rush win rate and run block win rate. This is a huge blow for the Packers and the Broncos get two highly respected, highly energetic and highly capable coaches for their staff. Obviously, Sarah, a lot of great insight there from Peter Bukowski. Loved the storytelling nature, too, about his dad and what, you know, LaFleur had learned the system and how the Kyle Shannon, we call it the QB collective now, how that system has evolved, right? It's not necessarily the same offensive scheme that the Broncos ran back in the 90s. It's an evolutionary part of that, what Kyle Shanahan has done, LaFleur. And now Hackett understands that at a very, you know, significant level. So I, I'm stoked to see what the Denver Broncos can get. And if uh, Stenovich can come over and be their coach, we talk about the offensive line. Maybe they'll take the next step as well because they have some young pieces on the interior that could really benefit from that as well. What does this mean for Mike Munchak as of right now? We do not know, but something to keep an eye on Broncos country. But coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about and have a conversation about what have we learned as media members? What has Broncos country learned as fans about Denver Broncos general manager George Payton and his time with the organization? We talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. That's our friends over there at the Get Upside app. Ladies and gentlemen, you never have to pay full price at the gas pump ever again. Let me tell you about the Get Upside app. Listeners of Lockdown Broncos, they're earning cash back for every gallon of gas every single time that they fill up. And all you got to do is just download the free GetUpset app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill-up today cash back. Like I said, you never have to pay full price at the gas pump ever again. Using promo code TOUCHDOWN, once again, once you download the free app, you can get $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank fill-up today. Some people who drive a lot, they're making as much as to $200 to $300 a year in cash back alone. And there is no catch. The cash back, it gets added right to your account, and you can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, pal or an e-gift card brand like amazon or other brands just download the free get upside app today use promo code touchdown to get 25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank that's promo code touchdown and our good friends over there betonline.ag ladies and gentlemen betonline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond with afc nfc championship weekend betonline they remain the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022 it's a new year and they have a brand new updated desktop and mobile website where you can sign up today and you can receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit just use promo code locked on to get started from football basketball hockey boxing and ufc right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your sports action in 22 on your favorite sports. Bet online, 
where the game starts. All right, sir, continuing on the conversation on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, a lot of excitement in the air for Broncos country. Some skepticism, a lot of people wondering, hey, what if this works out? What if it doesn't? That is the risk reward factor of being a general manager and being a head coach in the NFL and, and making these decisions. So obviously, Nathaniel Hackett, the expectations are always high because it's the Denver Broncos. The expectations are always high because it's such a storied franchise, sir, and quarterback is always the, the talking point when you think of the Denver Broncos. But having good stability in coaching, I think, is super important. Now, we talk a lot about Nathaniel Hackett. We a lot, got a lot of great insight from Peter Bukowski, but I want to talk about George Payton a little bit more because I was thinking about it, and I wanted to kind of go back to the process here. What have the Denver Broncos learned? What have fans learned? What have media learned about George Payton in his time as the Broncos GM, as the guy that's calling the shots? Because the narrative coming into this whole coaching hiring process is Dan Quinn is the favorite for the Broncos job, and it makes sense because George Payton and Dan Quinn have a very close connection. That, I think, right there, Skewed the optics, I think, in the fans. They're like, oh, I hope he just doesn't hire his friend. We'll talk about that in a moment. But, you know, in hindsight, I want to go back to when the Broncos had an opening at the GM position, right? When John always said, hey, I'm stepping away. I, I can't do this anymore. I'll be involved in the, you know, the president role of football operations. But we're going to bring in a new GM. He's going to call all the shots. But everybody had said the Broncos GM job is very undesirable and nobody would want to go take that job. What happened? It was the first GM spot that was taken and it was filled by George Payton. Same things have been said about the Broncos head coaching situation by various people. Like, oh, this isn't a really appealing place. They have no quarterback. They have no owner right now. De nobody wants to go coach in Denver. What's the first head coaching job filled? It is the Denver Broncos with Nathaniel Hackett. And look, I, this is the job that's been filled. And I think one thing as well, it has served as a domino effect for the rest of the National Football League because after that, Chicago hired their guy. We're starting to see these teams make these hires now for their guys. And obviously, uh, Dan Quinn returning back to the Dallas Cowboys as their defensive coordinator. So no head coaching job for him just yet. Uh, it's wild. But I will say this, Sarah. The one thing I am going to take away that I've learned about George Payton Peyton is very articulate and specific in his process. Like they will turn over every stone. They'll look at every option. They'll get as much information as possible before making a decision, which I think sometimes we see in the NFL with executives, they want to make these impulsive decisions based on hype. And I think it's a very dangerous line. Like it could be very rewarding if it pays off, but it's very risky. George Payton is very careful. And, you know, like I said, intricate with his decision-making process here. He doesn't jump the gun. And he makes the best logical decision for the team, not just in the short term, but also in the long term. That's one thing that I've learned about George Payton. What have you learned? You know, I think this whole process, Cody, shows me first and foremost that George Payton's not afraid to take a risk. And I think that the Dan Quinn move, if it would have happened, I feel like that would have been indicative that Payton was really not wanting to take a huge risk. And why is that? Why do I say that? Because Dan Quinn was the only candidate of the 10 that the Broncos looked at with prior head coaching experience, right? So obviously you're looking at a bunch of first time head coach candidates and a, a you know, I guess it's kind of technically still year one for George Payton. I mean, he's the, the ink is still drying from his his contract that he signed with the Denver Broncos as general manager. So for him to go out as a, you know, borderline rookie GM or coming off of his first year as a GM to hire a first year head coach who seems to be bringing along with him first time coordinators. That's a big time risk, isn't it? Especially because we don't know who the quarterback is going to be. Nobody has a clue. And we obviously have our hopes. We have our dreams. We have our thoughts. But man, for him to be bringing in first-time coaches at these crucial positions at a critical juncture of Denver Broncos history, like you said, Cody, this is a franchise that is just absolutely everybody in Broncos country prides themselves on the rich tradition and history of stability at the quarterback position. And, and head coach Mike Shanahan being there for as long as he was, and John Elway for multiple decades, that stability, that, that consistency, that loyalty, that's what everybody loves about the Denver Broncos. And now you're bringing in some new, fresh blood, which to me – that excites me, Cody. And I get that a lot of retread coaches have had success in the NFL in recent years, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the direction that you have to go. Look, people were are, are scared off about Fangio and, and Vance Joseph being first-time head coaches and the way that things went for them. But again, we have to bring this up. The quarterback matters in all of these cases, in all of these situations. Your quarterback really matters. So to me, it shows that that uh, George Payton, excuse me, is not afraid to take a risk. He chose Hackett over the more experienced candidates. And it also shows me, Cody, and this is really important, 
he was open-minded through this whole process. The the risk factor is obviously there, but being open-minded in this, I'm not saying that if he would have hired Dan Quinn, he would have proven to be closed-minded on this, but at the same time, it was kind of like, okay, well, Dan Quinn is the candidate to beat. Let's see what you've all got. You know, and that's kind of the perception that I got from the way that it, things were being reported. So for him to hire Hackett and for him to bring on multiple coordinators that we assume, we don't know that for sure yet, but that will be first time coordinators. You know, that shows that Peyton had an open mind through this whole process. And he really was willing to hear about these guys vision. Like, what's your vision for the offense? What do you envision for this quarterback, that quarterback? What do you envision for the defense? How do you want to you know, keep things at the high level they were at these past couple seasons, I think he really took an open-minded approach. And as we know, George Payton is very collaborative. I imagine that everybody in that room had a significant voice, and we saw that from the fact that Kevin O'Connell was a finalist. Darren Moogie, I'm sure, had a significant voice. Kelly Klein, who he brought over from the Vikings with him, I'm sure she had a significant voice. And and all the way to Patrick Smythe and everybody, everybody in the room, I assume it was a very collaborative process. And so I feel like George Payton did a great job of exemplifying, obviously being willing to take a risk and believing in that process of just saying, hey, you come and impress, you're going to get the job. And that's the most important thing, right? Just making sure you're choosing the right guy that you believe will lead the team back to success and get them there. You mentioned the collaboration part there. Obviously, a group effort by George Payton. I can't wait for the Behind the Broncos episode. Like, I I imagine we're probably a week, two weeks away from that happening. I imagine they want to get the press conference done first. They want to have everything in place there to get some footage there in person to kind of showcase maybe him now traveling. And, you know, kind of the whole process we saw with George Payton last year is they did the whole Behind the Broncos thing, and he came, he's like, what jerk, like on the phone with the son what jersey am i gonna get you you know i, I love that and i can't wait to see the broncos social team their digital media team has done a terrific job with that i am so excited to see what is ahead here for this Denver broncos football team but ladies and gentlemen let us know your thoughts what have you learned about general manager george payton has your thoughts on him changed in a good way a bad way let us know in the comment section down below but coming up here in just a moment broncos country we're going to get into a little bit of a preview here of the afc nfc championship weekend with the local experts on the biggest stories part of our locked on now podcast you get that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, let me tell you about the other sponsor. Today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, that's our good friends over there at Built Bar. Ladies and gentlemen, you know it as the best tasting protein bar that is out there on the market. If you're trying to make some new healthier decisions here in the new year for your New Year's resolutions, Built Bar is the perfect way to do that because you can still indulge in a very delicious treat, a bar that's covered in 100% milk chocolate, and it also tastes great. It's soft. It's easy to chew, but you get the healthy benefits that comes with it as well. And you can go to Built.com. You can see the nine amazing delicious flavors, including the occasional limited time flavors that they have at built.com today if you need a little bit of extra fuel to help get you through your day well guess what built bar has you covered 17 grams of protein 130 calories and only four grams of sugar in every built bar protein bar that is tremendous value ladies and gentlemen and if you go to built.com right now and you find your favorite flavor favorite box whatever built products that you also find there as well they have a wide variety of different things that you can indulge yourself in you can go to check out use promo code lock 15 that's going to get you 15% off your next order at built.com. Once again, promo code LOCK15 gets you 15% off at built.com. All right, Sarah, as we get into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, look, AFC, NFC Championship Weekend is here. The Lockdown Podcast Network, they feature local experts on the biggest stories in all these different markets. So the Lockdown Bengals, Lockdown Chiefs, you have the Lockdown Rams, Lockdown 49ers, guys, a lot of great insight that if you need to stay up to date on what's going on in the AFC, NFC Championship game, they have you covered. But the Lockdown Now Today podcast has you covered with the local experts previewing championship weekend here, AFC and NFC championship. Let's get into a preview of the AFC and NFC championship game, courtesy of the Locked On Now podcast. Coming up, Championship Sunday is just days away, and we've got to punch two tickets to the Super Bowl. Who will serve as the reigning AFC and NFC champions for the year to come? We'll find out what each team still standing needs to do to earn a conference title on Locked On Now NFL. <laughs> The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. You're listening to Locked On Now NFL, local experts on the biggest stories throughout the NFL. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. Our Locked On NFL hosts are here to look ahead to the NFC and AFC championship games. Let's start where these teams are trying to get to Los Angeles, SoFi Stadium. They will host the Super Bowl in two weeks, but first... 
the Rams have to host the 49ers for the NFC crown. The biggest game. San Francisco 49ers fans don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo will be their starting quarterback next season, but they do know that he'll be under center to try to win his second NFC championship game in three years against the Rams on Sunday. With a chance to remain undefeated against the NFC in the postseason, our Locked On 49ers host says the key to a San Francisco victory is Jimmy G not making the big mistakes that could cost the Niners the whole game. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, former NFL and NFL defensive back Eric Crocker, and I am one half of the Locked On 49ers crew here to give you your 49ers' main key to victory as they travel to Levi South and take on the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC Championship game. All right, I, I think this this game it begins and ends with the play of Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, if I had to give just one main key victory here, it's Jimmy G, don't turn the ball over. And if you do, just limit it. So right now, 49ers, the way I see it, Jimmy G, one turnover. That's all we're giving you, just one. Anything more than that, it would be trouble for the San Francisco 49ers. All right, so that's going to do it, man. I hope you guys appreciate that. Make sure you guys listen to our show as well, Locked On 49ers, the best show on the Locked On Network podcast. Let's go, 49ers, win this game this Sunday. Matthew Stafford picked up his first playoff win just a couple of weeks ago, and now he's a win away from playing the biggest football game on the planet in the Rams' home stadium. Our Locked On Rams host tells you how L.A. gets the veteran QB to the Super Bowl he's chased for 12 whole seasons. Hey, it's Travis Rogers from Locked On Rams. So here is the one key to victory this weekend for the Rams in the NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. Remember when you used to play with matches as a kid and maybe you'd get away with it once in a while and a couple of weeks, months, years later, you realize how bad of an idea that was that you could have burned the whole house down? That was the Rams in Tampa against the Bucks. They were playing with matches. They turned it over way too many times. Four turnovers in that game. Somehow they escaped. Somehow they beat Tom Brady despite turning it over four different times. If they're going to beat the Niners, they simply cannot do that. They might be able to get away with one Two is probably the end of the wrap, and anything more than that, it is absolutely not going to happen for you there. You can check out more about the Los Angeles Rams on my podcast, Locked on Rams, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. It is free and available on all platforms, your team, every day. The Kansas City Chiefs played the Cincinnati Bengals just a few weeks ago at the end of the regular season, and since he won. So how do the Chiefs make sure that that doesn't happen again with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line? Our Locked On Chiefs says a combination of learning from the mistakes of that game and keeping the momentum going from last week will add up to a big win. But he has more on the details. The AFC Championship game comes down to two things for the Kansas City Chiefs. Can Patrick the Reaper Mahomes continue his run as we saw against the Bills? And can the Chiefs defense and its staff learn its lesson from the last time they played the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm Ryan Tracy from Locked On Chiefs, and that's what it comes down to. You saw an extraordinary effort by the offense, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, to not only get to overtime, but then win it. They don't need to do that. They have to avoid it, in fact, in order to get this win against a team that is nearly as explosive. On the other side, you have to be careful if you're Steve Spagnuolo or anyone out there on the field on the defensive side of the ball to not overreact to what you saw the last time when Jamar Chase destroyed that secondary on a circus catch after circus catch. Tyron Matthews should be back and playing in this ballgame. That helps. You have to adjust and you have to play over the top and you have to try to take Chase and limit him. Not take him away because then you're devoting too many other resources to that and someone else is going to hurt you. I think they're going to play more zone. I think they have to back off and let Joe Mixon hurt them if he can. They'll live with that, and that will get them the win. For more on this game and your Chiefs, check out Locked On Chiefs. We're free on every platform. We're part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Joe Burrow took a beating last week as he fought his way into the AFC Championship game. And while Cincinnati does already have a win against Kansas City under its belt this season, our Locked On Bengals host says that the team can't get a second one if it doesn't keep its quarterback on his feet. Will the Bengals take down the Chiefs on Sunday in Kansas City in advance to the Super Bowl? Hi again, everyone. I'm James Rapine of the Locked On Bengals podcast, and that is the question 
going into this epic AFC championship game between two teams that played each other this month. They played each other on January 2nd at Paul Brown Stadium. The Bengals came out victorious 34 to 31, overcoming three different 14 point deficits. I expect Sunday to be a different story. The Bengals can't fall behind against this Chiefs team by two scores and expect a rally on the road. But the number one key, protect Joe Burrow. Burrow was sacked nine times last week against the Titans. He was hit 13 times. And yeah, the offense had 19 points. Well, 19 points isn't going to cut it against Patrick Mahomes. The magic number, 40. If they can somehow get to 40, you feel good about their chances. How do they do that? They keep Joe Burrow upright. If they do that, he can distribute the ball to all of his weapons, including Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd in the Bengals just might sneak in to the Super Bowl. For more, make sure you check out the free and the only daily Bengals podcast, Locked On Bengals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. That's a wrap for us here. Thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every day. For more on the National Football League and your team, make your second listen, Locked On NFL and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kim Becker. This has been Locked On Now, Locked On your team every day. All right, Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Locked On Broncos here in your favorite podcast and provider also on YouTube. You can watch us. If you love today's episode of the show, hit that thumbs up button. If you're a brand new viewer and you have yet to hear this podcast, but you liked what you heard, what you saw, hit that subscribe subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content and coverage courtesy of Sarah Benninger and myself, Cody Work. Broncos country, we appreciate you as always. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day every single day. But with that said, we are going to enjoy the rest of our weekend watching football. We'll be back on Monday for a brand new episode of the show. We're awaiting some more Broncos news and surely enough, Broncos country, more is headed your way. We have you covered here every single day, Locked on Broncos.